Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am General Novel. This edition Stop Stories. NEMAC to convene Wednesday amid rising COVID-19 cases in country. Education Minister Honorable Sean Edward meets technical staff on his first day on the job. And the Ministry of Agriculture moves to address low levels of production in the cocoa sector. A meeting of the National Emergency Advisory Council, NEMAC, is scheduled to be held Wednesday, 11th August 2021, amid rising COVID-19 cases in country. The island is dealing with a new wave of the pandemic, which health authorities had anticipated given heightened activities associated with the July 26th general election. On Monday, 9th August, the Ministry of Health reported two new COVID-19 deaths. A 66-year-old male from the Denry district and a 61-year-old female from the Castries district. To date, the total number of COVID-19 deaths in country is 65 and the total number of COVID-19 related deaths is 27. As of Monday, there were 350 active COVID-19 cases. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George says the Ministry of Health has heightened surveillance not only to combat the increasing cases, but also the COVID 19 strain known as the Delta variant. The Ministry of Health is preparing for the possible impact of the likely introduction of the Delta variant, which is present in Caribbean countries such as Martinique, Barbados, and Antigua. To date, the Delta variant has not been identified in St. Lucia. However, we continue to send samples on a monthly basis for gene sequencing. Only the Alpha variant has been identified in country with a total of 51 cases thus far. The Delta variant has been identified in 11 Caribbean countries. They make up over 90% of the cases in the UK and over 80% of the cases in the US and France. The transmissibility is increased to over 97% as compared to the regular strain. The Delta variant is characterized for more severe disease, complications, hospitalizations, and deaths. Dr. Sharon Belmar George is encouraging all St. Lucians to take the COVID-19 vaccine as it has proven effective against the different strains of the disease. Preliminary evidence shows twice the rate of hospitalizations for unvaccinated persons and over a thousand times the viral load. Vaccines are still effective against the Delta variant in controlling the disease transmission, reducing hospitalizations, severe disease, and deaths. Vaccination remains the most effective public health measure in managing infectious diseases. The AstraZeneca vaccine has been proven to be safe and effective in protecting persons from developing COVID-19, its severe forms, complications, hospitalizations, and death. The Ministry of Health, we continue to urge the public to access the various sites to get immunized as soon as possible. Let us encourage our colleagues, our family members, our friends to get immunized from early so we can be protected against COVID and the Delta variant. The CMO advises the public to remain vigilant as the risk of the introduction of variants of concern is high. Everyone should adhere to the protocols that are put in place to keep the public safe. These include regular hand washing, proper use of face masks in public places, avoiding crowds and persons with respiratory symptoms, and keeping frequently touched surfaces clean. Newly appointed Minister for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocation Training, Honorable Sean Edward, on Tuesday, 10th August, met with staff of the ministry for the first time since assuming office. We get the details in this report. Honorable Sean Edward, along with the Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, Honorable Dr. Pauline Antoine Prosper, held discussions with the various heads of department and permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education. Honorable Edward says he's looking forward to forging cordial relationships for a healthy work environment given the critical role the ministry plays in the overall development of the nation. I try to underscore as much as possible the importance of what we do in the Ministry of Education. And unlike agencies say like, like the 
Ministry of Infrastructure where they deal with concrete and steel and buildings and infrastructure. But we are dealing with young impressionable lives and how well we deliver in this ministry can determine the quality of citizens we put out there to serve our country um, in the future. Honorable Edward noted that he has assumed office amid pressing issues confronting the education sector. A priority for the minister is overseeing the successful opening of the new academic year on September 6, 2021. I know there are ongoing works at a number of schools, so later today I will be apprised of the situation um, by the, the works unit. And once that is done, um, I will take to the field to see for myself um, how well the various contractors are progressing. Honorable Edward says his function as minister is to provide policy oversight and ensure that the education sector advances. There are a lot of technical people here, there are a lot of competent people working in this department of government. And I guess once I can get them to deliver an account for the government's time and to execute the various programs that have been agreed upon, um, by way of a policy position of this administration, I would have done my job. Success in the education fraternity or sector um, is heavily dependent on the quality of relationship we forge, we foster, we build with the various stakeholders in education, the teachers union, the students council, parents. I mean, the entire education fraternity must work as one if this department of government is to succeed and deliver to the people of this country. Honorable Sean Edward brings some 20 years of experience as an educator at the primary and secondary levels to his ministerial role. Parliamentary Secretary Honorable Dr. Pauline Antoine Prosper is also a veteran educator of 37 years, with 17 of those years as a principal. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. Still with education, the National Commission for UNESCO has partnered with the Department of Education to introduce the UNESCO STEM Education Program in order to build capacity and train teachers to become master trainers in the areas of robotics, artificial intelligence and 3D printing for sustainable development goals. We have more in this Chris Satney report. The four-day training, which was conducted in July, had as its main mission to inspire the next generation of world thinkers and makers with accessible, hands-on robotics and machine learning experiences and to increase awareness and understanding of artificial intelligence by making machine learning approachable, rewarding and, most of all, fun. Secretary General of the National Commission for UNESCO, Marcia Symphorian, says the training program is supportive of the Ministry of Education's ICT in Education policy, which builds upon previous initiatives of computer coding and robotics in schools. The organization believes that artificial intelligence has the potential to revolutionize STEM education through innovative teaching and learning practices which contribute to higher student engagement, enhanced problem-solving skills, new opportunities for learning, enhanced creativity, and the promotion of gender equality. Curriculum Officer for Science and Technology, Gianetti George, says the program will ultimately foster an increase in the uptake of these kinds of technologies for solving community challenges and the move towards sustainable development goals. It is intended that the program be tested at a number of pilot schools with the eventual integration and adaptation in the national school's curriculum. We'll also like to see the promotion of skill development for jobs in this era of AI, artificial intelligence. We want to ensure that there is inclusive and equitable use of artificial intelligence and the knowledge associated with robotics and 3D printing. So we want to see both boys and girls involved in STEM education. The National Commission for UNESCO has also been instrumental in donating a number of microscience kits for distribution at primary and secondary schools on the island. These kits will support the delivery of science education by providing teachers and students with the capacity to conduct experiments in a number of subject areas, including biology, chemistry, physics, and electricity. And because they are micro kits, it means that they, they are portable, they can be carried anywhere, and that we do not need to spend um, large sums of monies in the purchasing of reagents and other kinds of material that is needed to use the kits. It means that those kits can be used 
before students go into an actual laboratory. They get to use equipment. They get to work as scientists anywhere. This is the second installment of science kits received by CAMDU from the National Commission for UNESCO that it believes will be beneficial to students of any age. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Chris Satney reporting. In an effort to combat the cocoa sector's low levels of production and productivity, the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives has launched the Cocoa Sector Enhancement Project. Anisia Antoine tells us more. The Cocoa Sector Enhancement Project is geared towards the rehabilitation of cocoa farm holdings, transplanting of unproductive plants, and increasing of acreages with the overall goal of increasing cocoa bean production while improving resilience to climate change and the most common diseases that impact cocoa plants. Under the project, farmers are given the opportunity to sign a memorandum of understanding which would facilitate the collection of data including the status of cocoa plants, production, sale of cocoa beans as well as the prices of the produce. One of the tangible outcomes of the cocoa sector enhancement project is the additional subsidization of cocoa trees at $2 per plant. Head of the Agricultural Region 6 and Interim Coordinator of the Cocoa Sector Enhancement Project, Eloy Alexis, notes that these initiatives aim to address issues such as low return, low market penetration, and cross-cutting issues including insufficient data on cocoa production. Basically what that project stands to do is to um, revitalize and expand the cocoa um, subsector. A number of initiatives has been um, targeted such as um, propagation of seedlings for farmers. Currently, we have on offer cocoa seedlings for farmers at a further subsidized price of $2. Before it was $4, right now we are selling these seedlings at $2 per plant for farmers just to encourage them to um, increase the acreage of um, cocoa on the island. The Department of Agriculture has also collaborated with the Cocoa Research Center at the University of the West Indies in Trinidad to host quality analysis and sensory analysis training. Mr. Alexis adds that the department is also looking into the possibility of forming a marketing cooperation for cocoa farmers. The reason why we have um, decided to go via the route of the cooperation is that um, we want to give farmers greater return and um, what happens with um, the cocoa subsector cocoa in terms of the per persons who are involved in cocoa production if you were to produce cocoa beans and then just sell the raw material there isn't much profit to be um, made from that and um, considering the fact that cocoa is a plantation crop. You need a very sizable acreage so that for you to make a decent living from cocoa. So hence the reason why we are going for the route of a corporation that um, these people when we sell the beans or the corporation market the beans. Any dividends, any profit which is derived from the corporation, this profit would be repatriated to the farmers. Farmers interested in purchasing cocoa plants through the Cocoa Sector Enhancement Project should contact their local extension office. The plants will be made available at the Bath Propagation Station in Soufre near Myers Bridge. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The month of August is observed as National Breastfeeding Month. The Ministry of Health is highlighting an initiative that helps support healthy breastfeeding practices, the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative. This initiative was launched in 1991 by PAO and UNICEF. Lisa Hunt, Chief Nutritionist in the Ministry of Health, says the initiative helps encourage facilities that provide maternity and newborn services to better promote breastfeeding. The Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative is based on the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding. Adherence to the 10 steps positively impacts breastfeeding initiation and duration as well as breastfeeding outcome. PAHO recommends that health facilities implement measures to protect, promote and support breastfeeding starting in the period of antenatal care up to when mothers and newborns are discharged. 
Han says due to the benefits derived from breastfeeding, expectant and nursing mothers require special considerations such as maternity protection to empower parents to successfully breastfeed their infants. WHO recommends that employers implement policies including paid maternity leave, flexible or reduced working hours for breastfeeding mothers and a dedicated room for breastfeeding in the workplace that is private and hygienic. This will create a positive environment that will increase breastfeeding rates, which will have a positive impact on the health of our infants and the nation as a whole. Benefits of breastfeeding to the baby include reduced risk of asthma, obesity, and sudden infant death syndrome. Breastfeeding also contributes to a lower risk of high blood pressure and breast cancer in mothers. The Veterinary and Livestock Services Division, in partnership with the Global Environment Facility Small Grants Program, United Nations Development Program, and the Ayanola Apiculture Collective recently hosted a national workshop on apiculture. We get details in this report. The Veterinary and Livestock Services Division has recognized the need to adequately address the requirements of producers in the apiculture sector and ultimately work towards holistic development of the sector. The division has collaborated with other sector agencies including Jeff SGP UNDP, the Ionola Apiculture Collective, Export St. Lucia, and the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation and Agriculture to internally restructure the apiculture unit and provide training for stakeholders involved in the sector. The most recent training exercise is the National Workshop on Apiculture, which is aimed at developing an integrated apiculture industry in St. Lucia that promotes and protects natural ecosystems while also benefiting apiculturists, stakeholders and participating communities. Director of Agricultural Services, Dr. Aurea King-Snack, pledges the Department of Agriculture's commitment to continue collaborating with stakeholders to develop the sector. We also urge our partners to work collaboratively with our department as the success of this industry depends or demands that we work together, building synergies, developing a nexus of shared ideas and competencies and building capacity within our stakeholders. Today's exercise seeks to bring all our important partners and stakeholders together to discuss these items, gain more knowledge on the new and innovative methods in apiculture, and build networks for the advancement of the sector. The Department of Agriculture again pledges its support to the apiculture sector. We look forward to working with all of you and are excited for what lies on the horizon for the future of the apiculture in St. Lucia. The objectives of the National Workshop on Apiculture also include identifying new apiculture techniques that ensure the apiculture industry's optimization and sustainability, as well as promoting the production of beehive products that meet national standards. National Program Coordinator of the Jeff SGP UNDP, Giles Romulus, encourages the apiculture program participants to become more research-focused and innovative with the continuous introduction of new products into the market. That our farmers in the rural parts of our Caribbean and St. Lucia have always gotten a small bite of the pie, with the majority of the value added going to the metropoles and the mother country and so on. I want to make an appeal to St. Lucia in apiculture, this must not happen. The value added along that value chain must remain in St. Lucia and our people must become the, the, the supporters, the developers of apiculture in St. Lucia. Jeff is determined to do that and to invest in the capacity development of the people and government of St. Lucia. So his, let's remember the history this is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. Caribbean Ties, a connected people then and now. A unique exhibition that presents the diversity and complexity in the Caribbean before the arrival of the Europeans. August 1st to the 31st at the 100-year-old Anglican Annex. Open daily, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Be part of the past, still present today, through stunning exhibits accompanied by live cultural street entertainment. Save the dates.
August 1st to the 31st. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Ta, Janelle, Monsieur Madame, Department of Responsibility pour Information à le gouvernement de la CGIS, ensemble avec la Télévision Nationale de la NTN, qui a posé la Nouvelle Aquayol. Présente Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre de la CGIS, Onuab Philippe J. Pierre, déclaré que Gouvernement y a chen promet ki yo fè avan yo te antwe an pouvoa. Pwè menis pye fè deklarasyon sa la di wanyon adwes apwe le mam gouvernement te semate di wanyon gwan seremoni jedi pasi, la se jedi apwe midi, an kay konsit. Selon pwè menis pye, yo nan se premye an se promet la se pou soulaje le parwan ki te kay ni pou pe pwi fasilite pou le zetidyan ki kay viwe an dou à l'école en mois de septembre l'année 2021. Premier ministre Pierre fait un appel pour les principales écoles n'ayant pas de patience pendant les officiers du département de finance qui a finalisé l'arrangement pour délivrer ces services-là. Le Premier ministre a aussi annoncé que l'organisation National Trust qui a reçu encore l'assistance finance qui a déjà reçu en temps passé et qui a perdu à bas l'administration qui était en pouvoir. Le Premier ministre a déclaré que La route là, c'était yon qui était vide, tout bonnement. Et délai était très bon, et délai très difficile. Le Premier ministre la fait nation à comprendre. En la vie, la kay toujours ni bon temps, et aussi mauvais temps. Li même pas kay en position, il dit, qu'on Premier ministre pour tout temps. Le Premier ministre Pierre, en présentation, les membres des cabinets des ministres du gouvernement, il fait comprendre, c'est pas te yon qui était facile. Mais yon tout kapote sete kapabilite ki kay ede yon pou pren kontwit e kwe skonsabilite pou gouverne a fè le pep set le si. Premier ministre Pierre deklare ki pou se plize lane ki yon servis publik te fè yon posib pou konet a se bien diferans ki ka existe at yon lelmi e kwe yon ki an dek ka fè batay pou ni gany di wanyon kompetisyon. Idi yon si e ka kompan a se bien manye pou moun pe espiansi transformasyon Mouman yo rive an pozisyon pou tjebe manch pou vwa. E ka fason kote lot moun pe pa mèm sa konet yo anko. Pwè menis pye di yo si, se atasyon yi pou moutwe ki nepot edividi sa rive an pli ho degwe ek pli ho an lechel pou vwa depi yo ni bon kondwit, komitman, pasyans ek gwatitid. Ou palan de sa, Premier ministre Onoua Philippe Djepier te anonse le mam kabinet de ministre gouvernement jedi apwemidi, jedi pase, di wan gwan seremoni pou le mam parleman semate. Premier ministre Pier, kai weskosab, ebe weskosab pou finans, developman ekonomik, e ka fe des ekonomi pou le jenes. Onoua Dr. Ernest Hiller, se ministre pou afe touristik, investman, edistri, des afe le kweati, kultur ek informasyon. Onewa Moses Jobatis, se ministre pou sante e ka fe le pli gwan sitwaye. Onewa Sean Edward, se ministre pou edikasyon, devlopman di wab, siyans, teknoloji, e etonman de vokasyon. Onewa Alva Baptiste, se ministre pou a fe le zetwa jez, la vote etanasyonal, eviasyon sivil, e ka fe le pep set si ki ka viv alot peyi. Onewa Stevenson King, ni yon pli ho pozisyon des afè minis, ek osi se minis pou konstruksyon, ek afè travo, le po, transportasyon, ek devlopman vil peyi la. Onewa Emma Hippolyte, se minis pou afè komers, afè fabrikasyon, devlopman biznis, kooperatif, ek afè de konsumate. Onewa Joachim Henry, se minis pou egalite, chiste sosyal. Onwab Dr. Virginia Albert Poyats, se ministre pou servis biblik, a fe sekewite pe ya, ek a fe le travaye. Onwab Kenson Joel Kazeme, se ministre pou developman jenes expo. Onwab Alfred Prosper, se ministre des afe agriculture, la pech, sekewite de manje, ek developman le komin a pe la. Onwab Wayne Girard, se ministre des afe finans, developman ekonomik, ek ekonomi des afe jenes. Onewab Richard Fedrick, se ministre ambigo pwe ministre la, eki kai Weskosab, pou afe kai ek gouvernement lokal. 
opposition de sécurité parlement c'est honorable docteur Pauline Antoine Prosper en ministère des affaires éducation développement durable sciences technologie et étonnement de vocation et honorable Kevin Ferdinand en ministère des affaires touristiques investissement industrie des affaires les créatifs culture et information ministère de santé en cette ici j'ai déclaré que les mots cas de maladie corona j'avais dit très haut et j'ai fait un très concerné et au résultat de ça la caïne s'est changement yo kay annoncé tout de suite concerné ces protocoles et gouvernement qui kay gouverner maladie ça là en pays les officiers santé déclaré que bureau premier ministre là kay annoncé tout de suite cet changement pour ces week qui existait présentement et ça kay venir en opération le 13 août 2021 ou le 31 août 2021 ça qu'a fait comme ministère de santé j'ai annoncé de la de la mort en résultat des maladies corona et 76 cas neuf il était découvert 60 cas sorti d'ailleurs 179 tests qui étaient faits le 7 août 2021 et le 8 août 2021 c'était ça là trouvé attention le 8 à mois d'août 2021 dimanche passé ministère de santé a annoncé il a découvert 58 cas corona sorti à d'ailleurs groupe de 359 cas qui étaient faits entre le 3e à mois d'août 2021 pour le 7e août 2021. Samedi passé, cette ici enregistré 66 cas neuf au total de 246 tests qui étaient faits durant le 4e août 2021 pour le 6e août 2021. Le ministère de la Santé a noté que pour le présent, le mot cas corona a été très haut et ça a fait un très concerné. Le ministère de la Santé a continué pour conseiller tout le monde pour continuer à obéir à ces règles pour adopter adopter bon conduite comporter quoi bien parce que ça a aidé pour réduire à ce degré qui maladie ça la PC manger yo jaka conseiller moun ki ni sin maladie là pour rester loin gagne moun et contact et puis l'autre moun ministère de santé ka aussi conseiller public là pour toujours laver la main et puis savon servir masque à suffisance sanitize pas combler en pagal et aller au petit docteur dès pour sentir un problème des étouffement c'est comme ça nous avons trouvé une nouvelle amie, c'est madame. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie depuis moi encore. Si vous conservez la vie, vous pouvez vous présenter une autre nouvelle. À quoi vous avez Je vous remercie pour vous présenter au channel. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.